Hello, here is your video going over section 2.3, polynomial and synthetic division. At the end of this video, you should be able to divide polynomials using long division and synthetic division, as well as using the remainder theorem. So, long division. Long division you did back in elementary school when you were dividing numbers. So we're going to use a very similar concept except with polynomials. So your second polynomial is what is going to go on the outside. So I'm going to write this as x squared plus 3x plus 1. And it is dividing into my x to the fourth minus 16. Now I'm not just going to write x to the fourth minus 16 because when you are dividing polynomials, you need to make sure you have all of the terms in between. So here's what I mean. I have x to the fourth, so that means I need an x cubed. Well, my original polynomial doesn't have an x cubed, so I'm going to put in 0x cubed as a placeholder. I need an x squared, but I don't have one, so I'm going to put in 0x squared. I need an x, but again, don't have one and then minus 16, which is my constant. So uh, you need to have every single term in between your starting and your constant um, whenever you're doing both synthetic division or long division. All right, so now we can go ahead and start the process of long division. So I'm going to look at my first term. I'm going to focus on my first term, and I'm going to compare it to this term. And I need to ask myself, what times x squared is going to give me x to the fourth? Well, x squared times x squared is going to give you x to the fourth. So I'm going to go ahead and write that down right above my x squared term. I always like to line up my terms um, because that will tell you how many terms you have left. We have my x term and my constant. So we're going to have to do this uh, two more times. Okay. So I have my x squared on top, and what do I do with that x squared? I'm going to take that x squared and I'm going to multiply it by this x squared. That gives me x to the fourth. I'm going to multiply it by my 3x, so that gives me plus 3x cubed, and I'm going to multiply it by 1, so plus x squared. So whatever you put on top, you're going to multiply all of those terms by that particular term. Okay, now if you think back to long division in elementary school, what you did next was you subtracted. So what you're trying to do is you're trying to subtract this entire thing. So I always say draw the line, change the signs. So I'm going to subtract the first one, change the sign of the second one, and the third one. And then from here, I can go ahead and combine. So my first terms cancel as they should. Uh, second terms, I have negative 3x cubed. Uh, minus x squared, and then I'm going to bring down my next term, so plus 0x. And then the process repeats itself. I want to find what times x squared gives me negative 3x cubed. That is going to be negative 3x. I'm going to put that right above my x term, negative 3x. Okay, so what do I do with that negative 3x? I'm going to start by multiplying it by x squared. So negative 3x times x squared is negative 3x cubed. Negative 3x times 3x is negative 9x squared. Negative 3x times 1 is negative 3x. And then I want to subtract, so I'm going to draw my line, change my signs. Negative 3x cubed and 3x cubed cancel. That leaves me with 8x squared and then plus 3x. Bring down the next term. All right, now process repeats itself. So what times x squared gives you 8x? 8x squared, that's going to be 8. So I'm going to put plus 8 right on top of my constant term. And as you can see, we've reached the end over here, so that means we're almost done with the long division. So I'm going to take that 8, I'm going to multiply by 8x squared, so that leaves me with 8x squared. 8 times 3x is 24x. 8 times 1 is 8. And what am I going to do next? I'm going to subtract. Draw the line, change the signs. 8x squares cancel. 
I have negative 21x minus 24. So what you are left over with is the remainder. So here is what your final answer is going to look like. So I'm going to take what I have written on top over here and I'm going to put it with my remainder and here is what that looks like. So I have my x squared minus 3x plus 8 and I'm going to add my remainder on the end. So negative 21x minus 24 and it's going to be over what I divided by and I divided by x squared plus 3x plus 1. And that is your final answer for this long division problem. All right, let's do another one. Long division is, it's kind of difficult, but it's just making sure that you keep track of um, all of your terms. Sometimes you need to see it a couple times for you to really understand how the process goes. But as long as you keep track of all your terms and what you're multiplying by, the process isn't too bad. So let's do another one. So I'm dividing by x cubed minus 2x plus 7. So x cubed, now I am missing a term, I'm missing my x squared. So I'm going to put that in as a placeholder. Minus 2x plus 7. So anytime you're missing any terms, whether it's for the polynomial on the outside or the inside, make sure you put in 0 as a placeholder. So 3x to the 5th, missing my x to the 4th minus 4x cubed, missing my x squared, plus x, plus 5. All right. Focusing on that first term, I need to ask myself what times x cubed is going to give me 3x to the fifth. That is going to be 3x squared. So I'm going to put that right above my x squared term. I'm going to take that 3x squared and I'm going to multiply it by x cubed. That is 3x to the fifth. And then I'm going to take 3x squared times 0x squared. That's 0x to the fourth. 3x squared times negative 2x is negative 6x cubed. 3x squared times 7 is 21x squared. And once I have all of those terms, I'm going to do the same thing that I did last time. I'm going to subtract, so draw my line, change my signs. First terms cancel. Ooh, second terms also cancel because those are zeros. Um, that leaves me with 2x cubed minus 21x squared, and I'm going to go ahead and bring down my next term process repeats itself, so what times x cubed gives me 2x cubed, well that's just 2. So I'm going to put my plus 2 on top of my constant term, and as you can see, I've reached the end, so this will be my last round for multiplication and subtraction. So 2 times x cubed is 2x cubed, 2 times 0x squared is going to be 0x squared, 2 times negative 2x is negative 4x, and 2 times 7 is 14. Now if you'll notice, my purple polynomial has three terms, while my pink one has four, so that means I should bring down this extra term as well. So now everything lines up nicely. Draw your line, change your signs, and combine. That leaves me with negative 21x squared plus 5x uh, minus 9. All right, and then to write your final answer, I'm going to take my polynomial on top, so 3x squared plus 2 plus, I'm going to take my remainder, which is what was left over on the bottom, so negative 21x squared plus 5x minus 9 divided by um, what we divided by, x cubed minus 2x plus 7. All right, so that was the end of long division, and now we're going to move on to synthetic division. 
So synthetic division is way easier than long division. However, it does have some limitations. For synthetic division, you can only divide by x plus a number or x minus a number. So synthetic division would not have actually worked for this problem because this was x cubed minus 2x plus 7 or this problem because it was x squared plus 3x plus 1. So you have to use long division. Long division works for everything. Synthetic division only works if you're dividing by x plus a number or x minus a number. Okay, here's what synthetic division looks like. It's mostly just working with your numbers. So I'm gonna set up this little box. In that box, I'm going to take the opposite of this. So since this was a positive three, I'm going to put a negative three. And then I'm going to list out my coefficients of this polynomial. So I have 2x to the fourth, 5x cubed. I'm missing an x squared, so I'm still going to put in 0 as a placeholder. Negative 2x, and then minus 8. I'm going to leave some space, and then I'm going to draw another box after or underneath the negative 8. Now I'm going to run through the synthetic division. Here's what that looks like. My first term goes straight down. I'm going to take whatever's on the bottom and I am going to multiply it by what's in the box. So 2 times negative 3 is negative 6. I'm going to combine straight down. It gives me negative 1. Negative 1 times negative 3 is positive 3. Combine straight down. 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Combine straight down. Negative 11 times negative 3 is positive 33. Combine straight down and you get 25. All right, so much quicker than long division so far. So what is my answer? Well, these represent the coefficient of your answer. This represents your remainder. I like to call this the remainder box. So these are my coefficients for the answer. Since my original polynomial started with an x to the fourth, my final answer is going to start with um, one degree lower, so an x to the third. So I have 2x to the third minus 1x squared plus 3x minus 11. And again, I'm going to take my remainder over what I divided by. And there you go, easy peasy. All right, so synthetic division can actually be used for something called the remainder theorem, which is our last example. So if a polynomial f of x is divided by x minus c, then the remainder is going to be f of c. So the remainder theorem can allow us to uh, um, calculate uh, function values. So I wanna use the remainder theorem to find f of four. So if I were to set that up as a factor, then f of four is gonna give me the factor x minus four. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm taking this polynomial and dividing it by x minus four. So I'm gonna do that using synthetic division since it's way faster than long division. Again, from my factor, I'm going to do the opposite. So since I have minus four, I'm gonna put positive four in the box, and then I'm gonna list out my coefficients. So I have three x to the fifth, uh, missing the x to the fourth, so zero x to the fourth, minus 38 x cubed, five x squared, oh, didn't mean to do that. Uh, missing my x term, and then minus one. Okay, first term goes straight down. Three times four is 12. I'm gonna combine straight down. 12 times four is 48. Combine straight down. 10 times four is 40. Combine straight down. 45 times four. Now I'm gonna get my calculator. 45 times four is 180. Combine straight down. 180 times 4 is 720. Combine straight down, and that gives me 719. So what's your final answer? Your final answer is the remainder. So you would write f of 4 equals 719. 
All right, so that is the end of the video going over long division and synthetic division as well as the remainder theorem.